Hi everyone, I'm Gary Nall and I'd like to welcome you to a continuing part of our series on self-empowerment. Today the topic is how to find happiness in an unhappy world. Now all of us seek happiness. In fact, that's one of the whole purposes of life, joy and happiness. But if we're all trying to be happy and most of us are succeeding at various things, we have good educations, we have families and careers, and an awful lot of people are even financially well-to-do, then why aren't we happier? Almost everyone you speak with has problems, all different types. So what I intend to do is to explore some of what I believe are the primary causes for our lack of happiness and then focus upon things that will provide us a solution. Now mind you, these are merely some suggestions. By no means should you limit yourself to these particular perceptions, but at least they're a jumping off point for yourself. Now, I want to talk about something that's crucial to understanding happiness. Happiness has to be understood by measuring the strength and weaknesses of our positive side and our negative side. There's an old Native American concept that within each and every one of us there's two dynamic life forces. They call them the great wolves, the white wolf and the dark wolf. The dark wolf represents greed, insecurity, avarice, anger, rage, violence, connivingness, manipulation, all the qualities that we do not like. And then the, the white wolf, the dynamic wolf, is sensitivity, unconditional love, empathy, compassion, service, humility. Those two things every human being has. Here's part of the problem of a lot of people's lack of happiness. We'd like to think happiness is getting rid of all of our negatives and then only having positives. That's not possible. We will go through our entire life with our opposite always present. Remember, the best you can be is also the worst you can be. The idea is learn how not to engage the dark side of your nature. Let us let go of illusion. Happiness is reality. And it's because we choose to live in illusion that we deny ourselves happiness. We often have an illusion of what makes us happy. And very often that illusion is not really what does make you happy. So you have to step back from that belief that having certain things in your life will make you happy, getting married will make you happy, and really sit down and think, what do I really want? Not what do others want for me, but what do I really want? And when you can learn to answer that, and that can be really hard, it can take a lot of time, but trying going out by yourself and learning how to enjoy your own company a little bit more and understand that you can be alone and feel good because alone does not mean unhappy. It does not mean lonely. And when you get in touch with yourself and, and who you are and what makes you feel good, then you can let go of the illusions that certain things are going to make you happy because usually they're illusions created by other people, not you. The illusion of um our world is what is really destroying us. It, it, we can't see the truth. When we pretend to be something, it's as if we're programmed and there's no way to connect. How can one have relationship with oneself or anyone else if we are wearing this mask and we're not comfortable with um, who we are. The illusion, if only. If only I didn't live here, if only I was younger, if only I was black, if only I was white, if only I was taller, if only I was richer. If only immediately closes the door because it's saying, 
I must get through all these obstacles before I can find happiness. Not true. Happiness is a state of mind. It is a state of mind of being able to surrender everything that is an illusion so you can accept the moment you're in. If you're poor, you can be happy. If you're single, you can be happy. If you're a mother who is living in a ghetto with four kids and on welfare, you can still be happy. We endlessly and ceaselessly look outside of ourselves for happiness, always blaming. We play the when-then game, which says, when I achieve more, then I'll be happy. We play the if-then game. If so-and-so hadn't gotten in my way, or if I had a different parent, or if something had been different in my life, then I would be happy. We play the if-only game. If only I had more money. If only I had a different spouse. If only I had a better job. If only people would see me as worthwhile and who I am, then I would be happy. And until we address those, we will never, ever find a true sense of meaning and happiness. Look at Gandhi. Look at people throughout history that have suffered, who've had none of the worldly possessions, none of the things we think we have to have to be happy, but they found happiness. You could go to some of the most impoverished areas of the world. You could go to the desert and the Bushmen of the Kalahari in Africa, and you can find happiness because they're not living with any illusion. And we do nothing but surround our lives with illusion, if only. So get rid of the illusion, and you are then present with happiness. But you have to be honest about what is illusion. And many of our expectations about others is illusion. Love follows gratitude. Therefore, every day when you awaken, look for things to feel grateful for. The rising of the sun was an inspiration for me. The dew on the grass is an inspiration for me. The simplicity of life is what makes me literally soar up and become in the moment. When it works, you become a completely different person. Not only are you happy, you're able to move forward. Look at the little things, because life is merely an accumulation of small, almost imperceptible events that when we look at the aggregate total, we think, wow, isn't that good? And everything is cumulative, constructively and destructively accumulative. The bright side of our nature accumulates the positive and best we can be. The dark side of our nature accumulates mistrust, betrayal, anger, all the negatives. So if you spend your time thinking about things that make you jealous or envious, then you're accumulating day by day, thought by thought, just like the person that gradually, with no great big massive feast, but each day eats a little bit, they're going to gain weight at the end of the year and say, where did this weight come from? What was that extra 100 calories a day? 3,500 calories, and you gained a pound. So remember, positive little things. So gratitude about everything becomes a positive virtue every moment. When you feel really grateful for your life and express it, write your blessings down, and just start to greatly appreciate what you have. It's so much easier to feel loving also. That's, you get a warm feeling when you notice all of the wonderful things happening in your life. And you made them happen. And that's a really good reason to love yourself more. Gratitude offers us a chance to come back to our deepest self and the core thanks that we feel fundamentally for being alive. It puts everything into a grander perspective where we can look down on the larger scheme of our lives, look down on the entire scheme of life itself. And when we feel that, I think that it brings us into touch with the vibration of creation itself. And as a result, we feel honor, we feel gratitude, and that brings us into a natural state of happiness. Everything you do, look for everything around you to be grateful for. All right? When I'm down on my farm and I'm looking up at the big sky at night and there's just me and nature and there's this timeless moment, 
of acknowledging that I've been a part of this universe forever because you feel that connection. You feel the connectedness to something that's eternal when you're alone, but it requires being alone. And you just, the vastness of the universe, and you, you suddenly feel that connection. The universe allows you to feel the vibration. And I'm grateful for that moment. I'm grateful for everything. I'm even grateful for the bad things that have happened in my life because they've taught me lessons I can teach to other people. And the key is in gratitude of negative things, be grateful for not having to repeat it. It's the repetition of our problems that accumulates. We're all going to make mistakes, and that's completely okay as long as we understand them and we're grateful for them. Mm -hmm.